save your servant who trusts in you, my God. Or oh, Fader coming back at you again with another video. Uh, this one, once again, is on the upcoming election. And I want all of these people to understand just how passionate I am about this, man. I normally don't get this passionate about elections, but I just see some really funny style going on right now. And uh, we're going to go over that and we're going to make sure that everybody sees and understands exactly what we're dealing with. History in the making tonight as Kamala Harris, the first woman of color, will accept her party's nomination for president. The event capping off a convention of celebration and emotion. Kamala Harris! Do something. Kamala Harris is ready for the job. All leading up to this moment that many have waited decades to see. My nieces, nephews, grandchildren can say and that's going to be my first problem with this situation. Everybody's waiting decades to see what? I mean, are we voting just to see a historical event happen? Or are we voting for the best person to run the country? I too can be president or I can be nominated. Um, I saw that in Shirley Chisholm. I am the candidate. During the 1972 presidential race, Shirley Chisholm became the first black candidate to seek a major party nomination Good for and her. the first woman to run for the top spot on the Democratic ticket, paving the way for Harris. This is what. All right, now we deep into the technology. Listen to me, everybody out there under the sound of my voice. They will never, ever have a candidate of Africa descent that is descended from the slaves that was held in this country. Obama, his African heritage comes from his African non-citizen father and his white mother. He doesn't share our lineage and our background. It was building statues in Kenya for this guy, right? That's cool. He was the president. He was a person of color, historic, not a problem. Now we get a female and instead of her having the same heritage as the African-American people who are so fully behind her. And this is one thing you're going to notice about this. They're going to throw out all the black people who's descended from slaves. Kamala Harris's African ancestry comes through Jamaica. Doesn't come through here. So they're very careful to select who they want because there is no way they're going to let someone descended from slaves be the chief executive of this country. It's never going to happen. I would rather they run Oprah than to run her because at least I know Oprah struggled from her ancestry here in America through her family who more likely were slaves just like mine was and she made something of herself and she came up from nothing through all the trauma she had in her life and i know she knows how to be successful so i can take that person and say okay well i know you know how to be successful i would trust the country to you more than i would trust it to somebody who they gave the border and, and everybody knows what kind of job this woman did with the border it's incredible to me how we will vote for somebody just so we can have a historic event and not have any thought about what kind of ramifications that's going to have to our country. But we dreamed of. The excitement surrounding the campaign also comes with demands for progress. Pro-Palestinian protesters outside the convention this week continue their calls for a ceasefire in Gaza. We spoke to a leading voice in the uncommitted movement, representing a I don't even know why they interject in this right here. from the convention over the administration's stance on the war. So our message uh, to now Vice President Harris uh, is you know, everybody got a special to, interest group. Uh, everybody to, wants to, something to 
chart a new course to differentiate herself from President Biden. Tonight, Kamala Harris will outline her policy stances and make her case for voters to make history. And take the momentum of the DNC to the campaign trail with the election just 75 days away. In Chicago, Bree Jackson, NBC News. I think that's a great trick being played on everybody, and I think it's really despicable the way that they're doing this, man. We're going to elect this woman. They're going to put that woman in. And, and, and when they do, I want y'all to understand I'm saying it right now. The fix is in. It's manipulated. There's no way everybody's going to vote for this lady. Like I said, you want to be fair? There are plenty of, you know, ADOS black people out there, American descendant of slaves that will be qualified to run, much more qualified than Kamala Harris. And also, where was her Indian heritage represented at? Where were the Indian people standing in the front cheering for her? Why are they not out there? She's equally Indian, just like she's equally other races too. And believe me, that black side is less than we all trying to make it out to be. You know, black women love to take an ambiguously black person and just call them black when they're not just black. It, it, you know, it just doesn't make any sense to me that people don't see this cult of personality that we're putting on right here. The lady's not qualified. She's horrible. If you look at her record, just research it, just Google it, just look it up. I mean, the, 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 the strategy that they have to demonize Donald Trump just so we'll ignore the fact that at least he did the job. The country didn't go under while he was president. Things were good while he was president. Whether he inherited them or not, he didn't go down with it. And then we're going to elect somebody who not only do we not know if she qualified, I don't believe she is, but we don't know what the result going to be when we put this person in there. She obviously has handlers. She obviously cannot speak well in public. So when you hear all of these smooth, slick speeches and her laying out her policy, which ain't going to be her policy, everything's going to be written for her. She's going to be reading off the teleprompter and we're going to make history at the expense of our country. Don't let these stupid people who traffic in this type of stuff convince you otherwise. Don't let the Democratic Party the historical party of the Klan trick you into voting for them because they've had you ever since they let us off the plantation. They've been conducting this psychological operation on African-American people, which we really ain't African-American. We're American. I work with a guy who's an African-American. He's from South Africa. So, Thereby, he's an American now, so he's an African-American. Only thing is, he's white. We're Americans. I was born over here. It would be a different thing if I could tell you what part of Africa I came from, but I can't. Not without doing a DNA test, which I've done. But I, can't, I don't have the language of my people. I don't have the customs of my ancestors or none of that. So I'm wholly American. And that's why they'll never let someone like me be president. They'll never let someone like you be president. They tell this lie that because you take an ambiguously black person, put them up there and say that they're black, that that will inspire any other black person to say, hey, I can be. When it truly doesn't. We've had two now. Two. None of them descended from slaves. So that, that lets you know right there, you'll never get any reparation. You'll never get any compensation for your hard work. You'll always go into work being looked at as second class. You always have to try harder just to be treated normal. It's always going to happen. So why do we get out in numbers and, and all this fanfare to try to get behind people who don't have our best interests at heart? Kamala Harris don't know your experience. Kamala Harris does not care about you. 
this is a person who had evidence of people being on death row that could exonerate those people that she held on to it. And she didn't turn that over until she was made to do that. Who does she care about? Let me see if I can find this other thing. Yeah. How about we take a look at Miss Oprah Winfrey's speech, huh? Shall we? Shall we do that? Let's do that. Who says you can't go home again? We never left. After watching the Obamas last night, that was some epic fire, wasn't it? Some epic fire. Epic fire. Oh, man. Epic We're fire. now so fired up, we can't wait to leave here and do something. Why is she trying to sound like Martin and Luther King? What we're going to do something. is elect Kamala Harris as the next president of the United States. Because we're stupid. I am so honored to have been asked to speak on tonight's theme about what matters most to me. Why to you, you ain't running? And all of us Americans, freedom. We've been free since the 1800s. Uh, has anybody been not free? Where, where, where have we been not free at? There are people who want you to see our country as a nation of us against them. Yeah, you. People who want to scare you, who want to rule you. Yeah, you. People who'd have you believe that books are dangerous. They are dangerous when they tolerate the stuff that shouldn't be tolerated, when they take the focus and your eye off the ball and put it on things that we shouldn't be concerned with, like what's in your pants versus what's in your brain. And assault rifles are safe. There had never been one assault rifle that animated itself and killed anybody. The people that use assault rifles to kill can just very well use a knife or their bare hands. This is technology. That there's a right way to worship and a wrong way to love. People who seek first to divide and then to conquer. But here's the thing. When we stand together, it is impossible to conquer us. This is scary and sad. In the, the words time. of an extraordinary American, the late Congressman John Lewis. He said, no matter what ship our ancestors arrived on, we are all in the same boat now. <laughs> Congressman Lewis knew very well how far this country has come because he was one of the brilliant Americans who helped to get us where we are. But he also knew that the work is not done. The work will never be done because freedom isn't free. America is an ongoing project. It requires commitment. It requires being open to the hard work and the heart work of democracy. And every now and then, they talk about hard work, yet they never do any hard work, except when it comes to indoctrinate you on their ideology, which is harmful to America. Like the race baiting that we're doing. All we see, why are we talking about all these brothers and sisters? We ain't elected no sister. We got all the brothers and sisters trotted out here talking about their experience, their contributions to the country, and then you bring this Indian Jamaican lady up. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing, man. And then it requires standing up to life's bullies. Who's the bully? Where's the bully? I know this. I've lived in Mississippi, in Tennessee, in Wisconsin, Maryland, 
Indiana, Florida, Hawaii, Colorado, California, and s California. And sweet home Chicago, Illinois. Sweet home Chicago, Illinois. But you was born in Mississippi. I, I mean, let me tell you something. I lived in Florida, Georgia, Mississippi, Tennessee, and Arkansas. I ain't ran into no bully yet that stopped me from doing anything that I had to do. So I wonder who she talking about right now. I have actually traveled this country from the Redwood Forest, love those Redwoods, to okay. the Gulf Stream waters. Yeah, you love the Redwoods because that's where you do your Bohemian Grove rituals at. So I know you love those Redwoods, but let's continue. I've seen racism and sexism and income inequality and division. I've not only seen it, at times I've been on the receiving end of it. Is this not a billionaire that's talking right now? At the very least, a very rich woman, right? Uh, racism. But more often than not, what I've witnessed and experienced are human beings, both conservative and liberal, who may not agree with each other, but who'd still help you in a heartbeat if you were in trouble. These are the yeah. people who make me proud to say that I am an American. They don't say you're an American. They say you're an African-American. They are the best of America. And despite what some would have you think, we are not so different from our neighbors. When a house is on fire, we don't ask about the homeowner's race. Nope, we just call the fire department. Or religion. We don't wonder who their partner is or how they voted, no. No, we call the fire department. No, we just try to do the best we can to save them. Yeah, we call the fire department. If the pace place happens to belong to a childless cat lady. Which there's an epidemic of in this country thanks to your ideology. You're looking at one right there. Well, we try to get that cat out too. Believe me, the cat is going to be outside looking at y'all calling the fire department. Because we are a country of people who work hard for the money. We wish our brothers and sisters well, and we pray for peace. We know all the old tricks and tropes that are designed to distract us from what actually matters. But we, no, we are don't. beyond ridiculous tweets and lies and foolery. Is she alluding to Donald Trump tweeting? So a person can't tweet? These are complicated times, people, and they require adult conversation. When are you gonna start having one? And I welcome those conversations because civilized debate is vital to democracy and it is the best of America. Well, that's no lie. Keep going, you tell the truth now. Now, over the last couple of nights, we have all seen brave people walk onto this stage and share their most private pain. Amanda and Josh, Caitlin, Hadley, they told us their stories of rape and incest and near-death experiences from having the state deny them the abortion that their doctor explained was medically necessary. And they've told us these things for one reason, and that is to keep what happened to them from happening to anybody else. Because if you do not have autonomy over this, over this, 
If you cannot control when and how you choose to bring your children into this world and how they are raised and supported, there is no American dream. Okay. You choose to bring children into the world the moment you decide to have intercourse. That's when you choose. You don't have intercourse and then go after the fact and say, hey, I think I made a mistake. You accept what we call responsibility. And this is the difference between conservative people and liberal people. See, at the core of it, it's based on selfishness. If a mother is going to die to bring a child into the world, then it's like Mufasa. It's the circle of life. She don't get to kill the baby inside of her or unalive it. I said the word kill. I know they're going to straighten me up for that, but who cares? She don't get to unalive or delete the child inside of her for her own interest. That's antithetical to the propagation of the species because she could be deleting a person that's going to bring great change and great benefit to the world, whereas she has not because all she's thinking of is herself. And that's the core of the abortion issue. You thinking about yourself. Be responsible, have responsible sex. Take responsibility of what happens after the act. Crazy people. They the women and men who are battling to keep us from going back to a time of desperation and shame and stone cold fear, they. All of those are good things. All of those help us move in the right direction. When we don't have no shame, then we do things that we should be ashamed of and they're detrimental. See, that's what I'm saying. We're getting ready to elect somebody that's for all of this foolishness. We're getting ready to elect somebody that's for all of this degeneracy. This lady standing up here talking about being a degenerate and she's trying to cloak it in being American. Is anybody else picking up on this? Is this thing? You all? Yeah. Anybody picking up on that? They are the new freedom fighters. And make no, no mistake, not. they are the best of America. You're telling lies and telling us that they're true. I want to talk now about somebody who's not with us tonight. Tessie Prevost Williams was born in New Orleans not long after the Supreme Court ruled that segregated public schools were unconstitutional. That was in 1954, same year I was born. But I didn't have to head to first grade at the all-white Madonna 19 school with a U.S. Marshal by my side like Tessie did. And when I got to school, the building wasn't empty like it was for Tessie. You see, rather than allowing Madonna to be integrated, parents pulled their kids out of the school leaving only Tessie and two other little black girls, Gail Etienne and Leona Tate, to sit in a classroom with the windows papered over to block snipers from attacking their six-year-old bodies. Sad story, but it's race-based. Tessie passed away six weeks ago. And I tell this story to honor her tonight. Because she... The party of race. Let me stop this thing right here. Let me tell you something about segregation. Yeah, uh, we were segregated and we weren't equal. But you know what we were? We were families. We were married at an 85% rate. Matter of fact, we were married at a higher rate than white people were. The little that we had it was ours. We didn't sit back and ask the government for it. We went out and we made it. We tilled the ground. We practiced agriculture. We raised our own animals and we fed our own people. And we looked at people around us and we looked at what they had and we wanted that. But here's the deal. When they got rid of segregation, I'm not necessarily for it or against it, but when they got rid of segregation and we assimilated into the general society, how come then 
We stop wanting to be husbands and wives. We stop having families. We stop practicing agriculture. We stop hunting. We stop fishing. We started to live in government housing. We took their handouts. We stood out in lines and we took their government blocks of cheese. And our women chose to kick the man out and have babies out of wetlock and raise them in a war zone of their own making. Now, during segregated times, you had to worry about getting lynched. You had to worry about racism, bodily harm, but you didn't have to worry about that every waking day of your life because they were separate from you. But if you go to her home, Chicago, what the murder rate like there, what is life like for your average black person there? Now that we are integrated and assimilated, see these people practice lies. They traffic in deception. And if you listen to them, they're going to tell a lie and make it like the truth. They're going to tell sweet, sweet words into your ear. And they're going to make it all sound like, oh, well, hey, this is what should be happening. But what they'll never tell you is the truth of everything. Life is hard. And brown people in America got it harder than other people. But that don't mean we should sit back and ask those people, love me, take care of me, hand me this, hand me that. We already got reparations. It was called the Emancipation Proclamation. There are laws on the books to keep people from discriminating against you, to keep racism from you. And just because a person of another so-called race, because there's only one race, that's the human race, but a person of another ethnic group that doesn't like you does not constitute racism. That's prejudice. Don't let these people tell you that this country is racist because the average white person don't have time to think about the average black person. The average white person listen to hip hop just like you do. The average white person plays basketball just like you do. The average white person is thinking about the same thing you are, paying their bills. They ain't got no time to worry about what color you are, just like you shouldn't have any time worrying about what color they are. But this party right here is going to keep that on the forefront. You're going to hear a lot about race. This lady talking about 1954 and how it was back then instead of talking about 2024 and how it is in her home state of Chicago. Ah, there's an Indian lady. Hey, we she, represent the other like home. Ruby Bridges and her friends, Leona and Gail, the New Orleans Four, they were called. They broke barriers and they race paid hustlers, dearly man. for it. They, they but it was the grace and guts and courage of women like Tessie Prevost Williams that paved the way for another young girl who nine years later became yeah, part of the second yeah, class like, okay, to integrate enough. the public schools in Berkeley, California. And it seems to me that at school and at home, somebody did a beautiful job of showing this young girl how to challenge the people at the top and empower the people at the bottom. They showed her how to look at the world and see not just what is, but what can be. They instilled in her a passion for justice and freedom and the glorious fighting spirit necessary to pursue that passion. And soon and very soon. Come on, Martin. Soon and very soon, we're going to be teaching our daughters and sons about how this child of an Indian mother and a Jamaican father, two idealistic, energetic immigrants, immigrants, but not descendants of slaves. Don't, 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 don't forget that part. Not descendants of slaves. That same trauma you like to claim informs what you do and affects you. 
They didn't experience. Don't you never forget that. So how in the world is she going to represent you? How this child... We all immigrants. Grew up to become the 47th president of the United States. Apparently through sheer witchcraft. You do understand that Oprah's a witch, right? Allegedly. That's what I hear. Remember, she loved them redwoods. That is the best of America. Let me tell you something. Your upbringing and your uh, ethnicity does not make you the best in America. She ain't said anything about her performance. She ain't said anything about her record. She ain't said anything about her capability to lead this country. Her only qualification is that she's a woman of color, Indian mother, Jamaican father. Apparently, that qualifies her to be president of this country. And if it does, we are in trouble. Trouble. Trouble if that's the case. I'm telling you right now, this is absolutely insane. I'm witnessing something right here that's the greatest okie doke that's been pulled on the American people since the CIA killed Kennedy, allegedly. Yeah, dance for your own destruction. I tried to run from my destruction. You know I didn't even care. You know, you know, let me tell you this. This election isn't about us and them. It's about you yes, it is. and me. And what we want our futures to look like. There are choices to be made when we cast our ballot. This now, there's truth. a certain candidate that says if we just go to the polls this one time, <laughs> that we'll never have to do it again. Well, you know what? You're looking at a registered independent who's proud to vote again and again and again because I'm an American and that's what Americans do. Okay. Voting is the best of America. Yeah, but voting for who? And I have always, since I was eligible to vote, I've always voted my values. And that is what is needed in this election now more than ever. So I'm calling on all you independents and all you undecideds. You know this is true. You know I'm telling you the truth that values and character matter most of all. Nothing about capability, nothing about meritocracy, nothing about the ability to be a strong, great leader for this country. Nothing. Understand that. I can't even listen to no more of this doggone hypocrisy right here. I just can't do it. That's absolutely crazy. I hope people can listen to that and see what I see, man. I hope you can understand what's going on. What happened to the days when people to get nominated had to go through the gauntlet, had to stand up against other people who wanted the same job that you want and had to shine through beyond a shadow of a doubt that you were the best person for that job as opposed to being ushered in simply because you are an immigrant and you are of Indian and African, or why well, she said Jamaican descent. That seems to be the only qualification that they've mentioned here. It's all about race. Notice that it's all about race baiting. 
the, the Democratic Party is pathetic, man. They don't talk about it. I ain't heard nothing about why when we go to the grocery stores, everything is so high. I ain't heard nothing about Saudi Arabia coming up off the dollar as the standard to buy oil with. That weakens our currency. I ain't heard nothing about what we gonna do in order to turn this thing around. I ain't heard about how we gonna invest in our country, invest in businesses, invest in families, build our middle class because that's what makes this country strong, not elite rich people like the one that just got done speaking and all of the plebs and poor people who they call the goyim, who they preaching to. And they got you eating it up. I just can't listen to these people like that, man. And I'm not saying Donald Trump is your best option. I'm saying he's a better option than this lady is. And if you are horrified by that prospect, then you should be. That means you should never be voting for Kamala Harris because Kamala Harris don't know her butthole from a hole in the ground. All she gonna do is cackle, smile, and get up there and wave with that doggone new hairdo she got. That's it. She gonna read that teleprompter and tell you, hey, it's gonna be all right. It's gonna be cool because look, we brown. We got brown people in here now. So we're gonna take care of all of American problems simply because we immigrants and we brown. I'm gonna leave it like this. South Africa, man suffer through apartheid one of the worst systems has ever been on earth and they had our african brothers oppressed on a level that would make one cry if you were to think about it okay well they overcame that they they actually were able to stop that system with the help of international people and people like you and me they was able to get over that but then when they took all of those elite white people out of those head positions that was actually running the thing, guess what? It all collapsed. You know why? Why do you think it is? It ain't cause them people was inferior. It's because they chose not to focus on things like, Hey, let me look and see what these dudes are doing. Let me see if I can at least ape a way to keep the system going and then improve it as I go. Nope. They didn't care about that. All they cared about was race. Guess what they had to do? Invite all of them people back and put them in these positions again, minus the apartheid, which is a good thing, just to run the country that they never learned how to run for themselves because they were focused on race. And that's what I want to leave it with, man. Don't let race be the reason you do anything. Martin Luther King himself said, don't judge a man by the color of his skin, but by his character. You look at a person and you look at their ability and you look at what they can do and what they have did. And you look at what type of person that they are and you judge by that and you judge by their past work. You shall know them by their fruits. Miss Harris has done nothing but leave rotten fruit everywhere. She's gone. Never forget. She got into politics because she was having relations with a married man. That's how she got in. Remember, she was a kept woman. That man paid her a salary to do nothing. This is how she got into politics. All while that was going, Donald Trump was saying he didn't ever want to run for president. He was already successful. And yep, it was cost of a little nepotism. He inherited his father's money, but he didn't lose it. He grew it. Same way if he inherited the country, he going to grow the country. Look at them and look at their fruits. What has Miss Harris done? They put in charge of the border. She didn't even go to the border. She says she never been to Europe. I've been to Europe. And my vice president ain't been to Europe. My future president. Man, this is sad, man. I'm going to stop ranting. I ain't got no time for this no more, man. This is crazy. Y'all going to elect that woman and we're going to pay for it. If you think it's bad now. Wait until y'all elect that lady. I'm Lord Fader. I'm all the way up out of here. Official faith in the sun, moon, and stars. God is the only one who knows who you are. Believe in yourself. Protect your wealth. Start playing chess.
best cause they killing black people Don't place your faith in the sun, moon, and stars God is the only one who knows who you are Believe in yourself, protect your wealth Start playing chess cause they killing black people Yo, who you study? Who you trying to be like? Source is dead, ain't nobody getting no fire yeah. like We in the streets trying to overcome this evil This ain't no joke no more, they killing black people Cause we not really considered citizens We don't know the mess emancipation put us yeah. in Terms of the document was that we leaving But we stayed cause they had our folks believing I don't know about you, but where my mule at? Where the acres that they promised that we'll go with that? They sat back just to see if we would roll with that Black Folk cheap labor make this country fat Don't give a damn about a Democrat Republican Gay folks took the shine off the black man More interested in what's in your underwear Their black lives needed something cause they don't care Don't place your faith in the sun, moon, and stars God is the only one who knows who you are Believe in yourself, protect your wealth Start playing chess cause they killing black people Don't place your faith in the sun, moon, and stars God is the only one who knows who you are Believe in yourself Protect your wealth, start playing chess cause they killing black people Steady word about some shoes that your man got The car he drives or the fact that his girl's hot If he the have, then I guess you are the have not You covered what he have, so he in a bad spot Black people hurt their own, trying to live a thug life You slow and simple-minded, so you live a bug's life Competing for the scraps that fall off while they table An old story going back to Cain and Abel These evil rappers have you focused on your low self Copy how they live, that ain't good for your health You can't learn to be a man from a pop star Head in the clouds like you was a rock star Who you gonna be, king, queen, rook upon? Act like an animal and that's how you be looked upon Not understanding what be locked inside your DNA A righteous man will always choose to walk the narrow way Don't place your faith in the sun, moon, and stars God is the only one who knows who you are Believe in yourself, protect your wealth